One of the first differences you're going to notice with Canvas Quizzes Next is where you actually create a quiz. In the past, if you want to create a quiz, you went to Quizzes. If you wanted to create a discussion board, you went to Discussions. If you want to create an assignment, you went to Assignments. And in each one, you had this clear spot of where to go with the blue plus button. Now, though, Canvas is trying to consolidate things into one spot, especially since a lot of times we were kind of fighting quizzes or fighting students rather with the connotation of quiz or test. Because to them, that was a rather major assessment. But a lot of times, really, we just were using this for an assignment with individually graded questions. And so we don't quite have that same hurdle to overcome when it's in the assignment category. So what we're going to do is we are going to click on this plus quiz test button in assignments. So if we click on that, you're going to notice right away that there are a few differences. It starts off the very same where we enter our assignment name. But then we're going to enter the number of points like we would for an assignment. On an assignment that worked fine because it was something external kids were going to be submitting, so we already had this overall point value. With a quiz, however, because we're going to go afterwards and create our number of questions, I think we've all experienced where we thought it was going to be a certain number of questions and it ends up being a couple more or a couple less, changing point value slightly. I don't really like this part where we have to set up the points in advance and it's not going to necessarily sync up with how many points it ends up being. So this is something where you do need to remember to go back and check and it's hopefully something that Canvas is going to fix in the future. If you are syncing your grades over to your um, PowerSchool gradebook, you are going to want to make sure that you have brought over your assignment groups and that you are clicking on here to put it in the correct category. Here, because I'm not, I'm just going to leave it in the default assignments. You can, just like before, decide how you're going to display points. You'll notice this external tool, which those of you who used, say, Google Docs for some assignments, you will be familiar with this, but it's new to the quiz feature. Just leave it alone. It's already set up by default for us. You'll decide if you're going to sync to PowerSchool and then who you're going to assign it to. So this part is very similar. You'll notice, however, we don't have our tab to switch over to our questions. What we're going to do to be able to get to that and our missing features is we're going to click on Save. So really quick, while that's getting set up, I'm going to click over to the traditional quiz so you can see how these are different. So here we have the quiz instructions, which you would have put right after you put the name of your quiz. You don't have as many quiz types. These other options weren't really used very often, so I don't think they really moved those over. But you still had your assignment groups. You could sync to PowerSchool. Here you decided if you wanted to shuffle answers for everything. Now that's on a question by question basis. You can set up your time limit, multiple attempts, you can set up your access code and things like that. Then you'd switch over to your questions. So some of those features are missing from the initial setup screen on Quizzes Next. But if you click back over here with me, we've got, here's where we add our instructions. So we can come over here, add whatever instructions we need kids to do. Then I come over here to settings up here and here's where I can go through and make sure I include some of those things that I used to do on that initial setup screen. So for example, if I want to require a student access code, I click on that here. If I want to give students multiple attempts. And then here's a new feature that I think a lot of teachers are going to like, and it's the shuffle questions feature. So this, instead of just shuffling the answers, allows the questions themselves to be moved around throughout the test. So this is one that I think is going to be quite popular. Then when I'm done setting these up, I just click back on build.